The clubs you see here are the Callaway line produced over the last seven to eight years. These two heads are from the Callaway Big Bertha line. It has a small receiver groove and it is a bore through. The steel head also has a shallow receiver groove and a bore through. Next, Callaway developed the Great Big Bertha 2, which still has a bore through, but it has a deep receiver groove. It takes a 350 shaft. The VFT has a bore through and a deep receiver groove. Callaway has developed an X series and a fusion driver. This is the popular FT5, which is a composited graphite with a titanium face. It has the same type of receiver hole, but it is not a bore through. This is an FTI, which we can show you how it is constructed. It is a composite, and here we've pulled off the composite area. The composite area is glued to the titanium face and hosel. You need to be very careful pulling this apart. These are the two adapters that Billy Bob makes. This is the 335, and this is the 350. These will fit the Callaway line that are being featured in this portion of the video. The adapters are made out of the same material Callaway uses, so you get the same feel and the same performance out of the club. On the two early models, the Steelhead and Big Bertha, we make a ferrule that will lock into these clubs' heads' shallow receiver grooves. It cannot be fully round like the Callaway because it's a proprietary item and therefore it has a flat side, but once it's on, it looks almost like the original. We are now going to remove a bore through VFTRC, and we are first going to show you how to remove the shaft. First, put it in the jaws of the Billy Bob extractor. Use the specialty side of the shaft extractor. Then, tighten the jaws. Then, we will heat it up using a heat gun, although you can use a torch. Heat for approximately 8 to 10 minutes. It's important to heat up the face and the back as there is a lot of shaft that goes through. The metal will be hot, so use precaution when removing it. Once heating is finished, crank up the jack and the head will slide off. The head will have a collar that goes all the way down and the shaft has a secondary collar. The adapter will fit right in there. Now, looking at the shaft, the adapter on the end is made out of a very hard plastic, and it can be difficult to remove from the shaft. If it gets stuck in the head, it has to be drilled out. If it's stuck on the shaft, it needs to be heated. Then, take a hook blade knife and pull it off. After removing the head and the adapter from the shaft, you need to clean all the old epoxy off the shaft. Using a 1x42 micro belt for micro belt sander, you can sand off all the epoxy from the shaft without damaging the fibers in a graphite shaft. First, turn on the sander, and using easy pressure, turn the shaft against the belt with one hand while holding it with the other. All of the epoxy is removed and the shaft is now prepped. Be sure not to touch the prepped part with your hand, as the oils from your hand can degrade the epoxy when you build the club. To prep a new shaft, you need to have at least an inch to an inch and a half of paint removal. Using a 1x42 micro belt from a micro belt sander, you can remove the paint. First, turn on the sander, and using easy pressure, turn the shaft against the belt with one hand while holding it with the other. If you push too hard or use too much pressure, you can damage the shaft or remove too much paint. Now, we're going to reshaft the FT5. First, make sure it's clean inside the hosel. Using the wire brush, clean out any epoxy. Then, use an air gun to blow it out a little more. If there is epoxy residue in the hosel and the collar doesn't fit in, you can use a 7 16 drill to clean it out and remove any residual epoxy. Now, mix the epoxy. Put a little bit of epoxy on the shaft and then slide the adapter over the top. Then, put glue on the windows and on the shaft. Add a little glue down inside the hosel. Then, insert the shaft into the head. Now, it needs to be cleaned with alcohol and a paper towel, and it is finished. Now, we are going to look at the FTI, which is composite and titanium. If you heat it up wrong, you can break the seal and the head will be ruined. A safe way to do it is to cut the shaft off. You cannot save the shaft, but this is the safest way to remove the head. Then, to remove the adapter from the hosel, you can use a heat rod, but you can also drill it out. To do a drill out, step down. You'll need a smaller size drill. Hold the head with one hand and drill into the hosel with the other. Drill all the way down to the end and then dump the debris out. Then check it once again by drilling to make sure you've gotten to the bottom. Then, use a 7 16 spit to clean out anything on the top. Now we have a clean hosel that will allow us to put in a new shaft. 
To add a shaft to the steel head of a great big Bertha Warbird with a bore through, we start by mixing the epoxy. Then take the head and put a little epoxy on it, and using the shaft, push the epoxy all the way down inside. Then take the wide collared ferrule, put it on the shaft, and slide it up to the glue line, which is right where the paint ends. Then put some more epoxy on the shaft and then push it into the hosel. Make sure there is a good coating on the inside. Move up the head all the way and make sure there is enough of the shaft coming through so you can finish off the bore through. Give it a couple of taps to bring it up and then set it down. Next, take Billy Bob's graphite shaft pin and put some epoxy on it. Make sure there is enough epoxy on it and then put it in the shaft and tap it in. Next, take cutters and cut the graphite shaft pin off. Using a paper towel and some alcohol, clean off the excess epoxy. This is the finished look, except for completing the bore through area. Once the epoxy has had plenty of time to cure, we will smooth down the area of the bore through using a heavy scop right wheel. Make sure to remove only a little bit of material at a time, so as to not damage the club head. Once it is smoothed down, move to the polishing wheel. Using light pressure, smooth the area out. Use some acetone on a paper towel and clean the bottom of the club. Now the club has a factory finish on the bore through. Now we are going to fix a great big Bertha 2, which is a bore through, using Billy Bob's 335 shaft adapter. First mix the epoxy, then coat the shaft and then insert the shaft into the adapter. Next, fill the rest of the adapter, including the windows, to make sure there's enough epoxy on the adapter. Insert the shaft with the adapter into the club. The shaft needs to be abraded enough to get the tip all the way through to the end as well as cover the paint line. Tap it through and the shaft should come out at the end. Next, we need to fill the hole in the shaft. Using a Billy Bob bore through graphite pin, insert it into the hole after putting some epoxy on the graphite pin. Make sure there's enough epoxy on the pin and in the hole, and tap it to secure it in. Using cutters, cut the graphite pin. Using a paper towel and some alcohol, clean off the excess epoxy. Once the epoxy dries, we'll complete the bore through. Using the heavy Scoprite wheel, we will smooth down the area of the bore through. Turn on the wheel and take off a little at a time. Using just a little bit of pressure, work the outside of the area. Too much pressure will remove too much material from the plastic pin. Once it's smoothed down, move to the polishing wheel. Using light pressure, smooth the area out. Then, using a cloth wheel, clean it up a little bit more. Use some acetone on a paper towel to clean the bottom of the club. Now the club has a factory finish on the bore through. We'll now take a look at a bore through iron. A regular 370 shaft stops short of coming all the way through on a bore through Callaway. Callaway manufactures this club with slits in the shaft, which allows it to be handled during manufacturing, without having to wait for the epoxy to dry. A small amount of material needs to be removed from the club head, so that the slits do not have to be cut in the replacement shaft. First, put the head in a hosel holder. Then, put a 370 reamer on the drill and ream out the head. It needs to be reamed out just enough so the shaft will go through. Now, using a wide collared ferrule, we'll reassemble the club. First, mix up the epoxy. Then, take a Billy Bob steel shaft pin, coat it with epoxy and put it in the shaft. Cut off the end of the pin with cutters. Coat the shaft with epoxy. Put the ferrule on. Apply epoxy to the head and then put the head on the shaft. Make sure there is good adhesion and it goes all the way through passing the point where the bore through needs to come through. Using a paper towel coated with alcohol, clean off the club. Once the epoxy dries, will complete the bore through. There is a steel shaft in the bore through iron, so it will be more difficult to smooth down than a graphite shaft. Using a metal wheel, smooth down the bore through area. Be careful not to gouge the club head. Move to the hard scop right wheel and clean up the edges. Once it is smoothed down, move to the polishing wheel. Using light pressure, smooth the area out. Use some acetone on a paper towel to clean the bottom of the club. Now the club has a factory finish on the bore through.